Google Plus for you and me. <laughs> and welcome to the ABCs, yeah. rocking the blocks of the ABCs of Google Plus. And I see that my co host, Sean Mon, <laughs> has found his A because before the show he lost it. I did, I lost it. Sandra, <laughs> yeah. I lost it. In more, in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Sandra Watson with the ABCs of Google Plus, and you're on our show, Rock on the Blocks with the ABCs of Google Plus. Welcome. And we have Sean Mon, who is from across the pond in the UK. Sean, I'm going to ask you to please introduce yourself. Tell us what you do when you're not with Rock on the Blocks, sure. and you're on. <laughs> okay, Sandra, thank you very much for that. Well, first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, do you know it's strange? Do I have an existence outside rocking the blocks? I, I really don't know. It seems that like this is my life. But uh, um, in, in, in all seriousness, thanks for that, Sandra. Um, what I do outside is I'm, I'm a business coach um, and also a social media coach, predominantly in the UK, although uh, I hope to be doing more in the States as, as we move forward. So, so that's me. Welcome, everybody. Cool. <laughs> well. We're I'm very happy that you um, are my co-host, Sean. Without you, it, I don't know what I would do without the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. heard, see what I got? I got this darling little thing here for. Oh, it goes this way. <laughs> for me to play the songs. And you know, somebody said pretty soon we're going to turn into romper room if I'm not careful. So I have to be <laughs> careful. And out there we can see all of our little guests. <laughs> but we want to thank everybody for coming and joining us. And today we are delighted to introduce you to Carrie Wielden from again across the pond in the UK. Now, she and Sean do not live close to each other. I don't know how many miles away because I'm not familiar with the landscape of uh, the London area, but um, Carrie uh, has had a, an interesting career mm -hmm. with uh, what, what we're going to be talking about today, but I'm not going to botch it up because I did put a lot of things in the details, and when I did the trailer for this show, I did about 50 takes because I kept ruining everything, Carrie. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to please tell us what you do and mm -hmm. then we'll get into some discussion after that. But just, you know, go into where you are over there. <laughs> right. Well, I, I live just west of London, but I guess I set up about four years ago a website for women over 50 because my background's headhunting. So I've worked, well, actually both sides of the Atlantic as a headhunter, but I felt there was an awful lot of discrimination against them in. At that point, we had uh, female presenters on TV losing their jobs as soon as they reached that sort of magic birthday. And I just wanted to make a stand, and I wanted to create a platform to give women a voice. I had no idea, I mean, I'm not technical, I'm not a writer, I'm not a journalist, I knew nothing about websites, hadn't even heard of social media, but for something, I just decided one day I was going to do it. And so I set up a website called Fab After 50, and I guess sort of over the last four years it's kind of become such a huge part of my life. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't something right. that you decided to turn into what it has, but it evolved into that little by little and inch by inch. It has, absolutely. I mean, it's really, I guess I've been very fortunate that people have get engaged with the message that we're getting across and wanted to get involved. So I've been very lucky in that respect. And I think it's just struck a chord with a lot of different women, both sides of the Atlantic, actually, and in Australia, all over the world, really, who have, uh, been, yes, they, they do want to have a platform where they can share that they think the life over 50 can be fabulous, and I'm very pleased to play a very small, very small part in that. Well, you know, before we get into some of the questions that Sean and I have um, uh, discussed together that we really are interested to see how you're going to answer for our audience, the one thing I think we need to clarify, um, you're talking about Fab After 50 with women, and we have Sean, the mon, <laughs> and he might be feeling a little left out, so do, no. you, have, do you have men that you talk to also, or is well, this strictly we, a platform for women, Carrie? Well, I guess the platform is mainly for women, but we do have men who contribute, and I think some men come along because they want to understand their, their wives and partners better. So although it's the website's aimed at women, we actually do have men who engage, and especially certain sections like the careers section, none of those sections are applicable for men as they are for women. So they do tend to uh, participate in that section. Yeah, I've, I've, I've noticed actually, I, I was um, 
checking out some of your your amazing mm -hmm. content, Kerry, earlier, and you've got you've got things on relationships, you've got segments on relationships, segments on finance. Yeah. And I guess mm -hmm. those elements are quite universal, aren't they? So although mm -hmm. your target audience is is women, it's very informative to read as a guy as well. Like that that would be my feedback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yes, probably, possibly, especially when the careers things. So I've actually been from fair up to fifty. I've been asked to be a and contributor careers, to things like um, the the Sunday, the, the Times newspaper asked me to participate in some projects to get the over fifties back into work. And that's been men and women. A lot of those messages were taken from the original fair up to fifty website. And right. I think certainly on finance, absolutely. Although there are some legal changes in the UK. Which have affected women more than men. So obviously, mm. we have to address those from a, a female perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. So, a bit serious, that, but here you go. But we also <laughs> have makeup. <laughs> but I, no I, I noticed, Sean, you said you've been watching my makeup videos. So, um, mm, so uh, you can t teach us all how to apply a mascara <laughs> now. Well, so, I, well actually, if, 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 if Sandra just wants to blue box me for, for just a moment, I. I Notice what I've done with the contours here. Oh, a little, right, a little okay. bit of a little mm -hmm. bit of highlighter there, a little bit of mm -hmm. a little bit of rouge. You know, mm -hmm. looking quite good. It, it, all thanks to your tips, Kerry. So well, there you go. Right. Well, I, I definitely see the the shiny parts showing much better on the cheek. Well, they do. Yeah, yeah. And, and you'll yeah, yeah. you'll you'll go straight well. <laughs> well, uh, okay. Let's get into some of the conversation and some of the mm -hmm. questions that we have because I think that the, sure. um, a lot of people are interested in this. Um, Sean, you were the one that brought up this this very first one about um, being on other platforms first. So let let me let you pose it first to Carrie. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we we also spoke about this in in the green room just before the interview, uh, and and the, first of all, Kerry, you you put a disclaimer in, which I think is worth stating. Yeah. Social media is not your business, and we no, understand that. So no. what Sandra and I are looking to do is understand how you interpret social media to mm -hmm. to drive your business, and and the question that comes from that is knowing that you you had a substantial Facebook engagement prior to coming onto Google Plus mm -hmm. and knowing also that that was true of Twitter what what are you finding are there any commonalities in in terms of the platforms or or are you just finding that they're totally unrelated um, well, if I could just go back, because I, I started on Twitter first, and I think I was very lucky that four years ago when I set up my website, you didn't have all the different platforms that you had to actually get to grips with in one go. So I started with Twitter, which to me was like, I got that because it was like sending text messages. So I understood sending a text message. And for me, when I was sending a tweet, it was like sending a text message to a friend. So that's right. how I kind of looked at it and I think I said to you, I mean I found even Twitter very confusing at first because when I first went on to Twitter you have people using uh, link shorteners. Well if you've never been on Twitter before you think you're going into sort of like hieroglyphics or something, one of the, you know, all these bitly bits and bobs. So that to me was confusing but you got through that. Then I moved over to Facebook so I added Facebook into the mix and that to me gave me more characters. So I think I sort of applied to the, the same thing but of course on Facebook, people like to share things like quotes and images, which you couldn't do then on, tweet, on Twitter mm. at that time. So that mm. added more imagery into the mix. And then also we missed, we missed that Pinterest. Pinterest is very visual. Yeah. So I did Pinteresting. And then, <laughs> which I came to absolutely kicking and screaming, but I think what <laughs> Google Plus has added is video into the mix. So yeah. each one has added a little bit, a little bit extra. Yeah. So, so, so my my follow up question might be, and mm -hmm. I hope Sandra, you don't mind me posing this as well. It just seems to flow naturally. Um, given what you've just said, there, there's different contexts for the different platforms, aren't I there? Think, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I'm getting, you know, I think Gary Vay Vaynerchuk speaks about this quite a lot. So, if I'm going to post something and I want to post it on a Friday, I might have a core message, but I'm not going to post it in the same way on Twitter as I would on Google Plus, as I would on uh, Facebook. So what's your steer on that, Kerry? How, how, how do you sort of deal with that? Well, I think I, I tend to post things, different things on different platforms uh, because the, the, the website covers a broad range of subjects. The so things which are very visual would be more on Facebook and on sure. Pinterest because yeah. it's, it's a different connection. Um, things which are very immediate would be Twitter because people, mm -hmm. so if I'm reacting to a news item, it would tend to be Twitter because mm -hmm. that's very of the moment. Things which I think a bit more perhaps thoughtful 
a little bit more in depth would tend to be a mixture of Facebook and Google Plus. Sure. And I mean, I've had, I mean, I had something recently which I had lots of engagement on Twitter. It was actually a comment about a retailer where they had accused women over 50 of being frumpy and old fashioned, which we objected mm -hmm. to. On Twitter, incredible reaction. Facebook, incredible reaction. As, you, as we said earlier, might be because I've got quite a few more followers on Facebook and, and people who engage with me on Facebook. But on Google+, nobody, no engagement at all on that topic. Right. So I think different topic, but I did another one where I talked about how the fact I thought women over 50 were very well placed to actually um, sort of do well in the um, relationship economy. That went wild on Google+, and nobody reacted to it on Facebook at all. So different <laughs> things get picked up, I think, on different platforms. That's a good point. Mm. Um, and what did you think, Carrie, was the reason that you had these certain things in one place and didn't resonate in the other? Did you think it was definitely because of the type of the aud of audience that was there or um, community that you were talking to or just the platform yeah. itself and the way things were? I kind of think maybe I'm mistaken, but I think on the most part I find Google Plus a bit more serious. And I think maybe it's the more frivolous things that, in my in my situation, have done much better on things like Twitter and Facebook. And I think on Google Plus, also, I don't have that same level of engagement in the community. Because Twitter, I've been there for four years, so people know me. Google Plus is quite new for me. It's only really been the last few months. I mean, I actually set up an account on Google Plus probably about two years ago. I just found it so counterintuitive. I didn't know where to get started with it. So I kind of gave up. And it wasn't until a, a couple of months ago that I felt, okay, my web chat told me I had to do it. He said, I know, I needed to. I didn't really come to it voluntarily. I came to it sort of kicking and screaming, really. And, and he said, I think you're okay now because you can join communities. Because he knows I like to talk to people. So by joining communities, I was able to connect with people. And I think that's how you and I connected in a community, wasn't it, Sandra? So because I could connect to people, it made a difference. Yeah. Um, you know, <clears throat> um, I wanted to bring up that uh, Andy Lyons makes a, a point over here, and mm -hmm. I'm going to pin this up and uh, highlight it. Um, social media is not just a younger person's game. Any age can engage yeah. and build relationships mm -hmm. and be a smarty pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hashtag smarty pants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I want to be sure and add that. And um, it's really true. But the one thing that I have noticed is that um, it seems to me a lot of times the people that I have found that I've talked to on um, Google Plus, and I need to unpin this, I'm sorry. Um, especially ones that are in a certain age group and boy I'm not one to to distinguish between age groups but they tend to go to the familiar as opposed to the things that are challenging mm -hmm. always and, and I agree with you I think to Google Plus was one of the most challenging things I had encountered mm -hmm. in a very very long time mm -hmm. and for people that are not um, educationally uh, challenged to come here and say that they have found it to be very challenging to me that says a lot Mm. And, um, so you know, what do you do with that when you're trying to promote a business or whatever? Because most people do come here for a purpose. They're not coming here on Google Plus, in my opinion, just to um, chit chat. Now, once you get here, you do a little bit more chit chatting. That's true, but it, you came because of a purpose, or you wouldn't have gone through all the hell. <laughs> well, I, well, I do think that I found on Google Plus, and that's actually very much thanks to you, Sandra. I was very so lucky I connected with you very early on. Was you. that you can get to know people very quickly because on the other ones, you, you know, if you're on Twitter, and um, forgive me if people aren't on Twitter, but I'm a forgiver. You might Twitter, you might have some conversations, or you'd have an exchange of direct messages, but you don't have the opportunity. That I'm going to call you and suddenly have that person's image chatting to you on video, you know, from from a distance. So you can actually, I think, you get to know somebody much more quickly, I think, on Google+. And also you don't have that limit of characters. Yeah, I... I, I big difference. I'm so sorry, Kerry, I, I spoke over you, but, you, you know, I'd, I'd really endorse that. Um, my, funnily enough, Sandra, again, I'm going to, I'm going to, we are not worthy, I'm going to have to... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but, uh, no. This is exactly, in all seriousness, this is exactly what happened to me. I, I, I'd... Uh, I'd struggled a little bit with Google Plus and let it go fallow. 
and mm. then I started building up some following. And then by chance, I was watching a hangout with Sandra and Dennis Deuce, and uh, I was in the audience, and, and, and Sandra and Dennis very kindly invited me to just come in and participate. And, and from that, um, I, I built this fantastic connection, which might have taken longer to, to establish on Twitter. So I don't want to steal your thunder, Kerry, but, mm -hmm. but in, in that sense, I, I did find that quite a contrast with, with Twitter, yeah. where I've mm -hmm. got my cohort of people on Twitter I engage with quite well, and it's in some ways easier to use intuitively, but yeah. actually the, the, the dimensions of my engagement on Google Plus are very, very different and very positive. So again, you know, um, just want to reflect what you, what, what you just said there. <laughs> Yeah, and then how do you, you know, for someone that's new, we have um, one one comment here, um, Denise Lee, I can't wait to hear about some tools I can tools. use for my business. Sort of that. And mm -hmm. I would say at this point that possibly, um, <clears throat> Denise, you're probably a little bit new to Google+, Plus, and um, hopefully some of the things that you're going to hear Carrie talk about and Sean, and certainly myself, our goal always is to help others to get beyond that, uh, that crucial beginning to where they feel lost, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden feel like everything comes alive, because it is a very lively place, and there's yeah. a lot of tools. And this is one of the very great tools, which is a Hangout on Air. Absolutely. Would you both agree? Yeah, absolutely, I and I love that. And I know that we've, I've actually, I've actually hosted a couple of Hangouts on Air on Fab After 50, and the people within the Fab After 50 community on other platforms have really embraced that, either through the live feed on the website page or watching the replays afterwards. Because they're not all on Google, Plus, well, very few of them on Google Plus, but they actually love the interaction from the Hangouts on Air. So that's a really good thing. But even the Hangouts not on Air, I've used it as a great business tool. Um, I do a lot of things which are visual, and I do lot, most of my things with people who don't live locally to me. And just having a hangout, a private hangout, where you do a screen share, has been incredible in terms of planning projects. And that, that's, that to me, that's worth its weight in gold. It's got that, like Skype, with an added dimension. So, so that's been really good too. So, so are you doing quite a few of those, Kerry? Just curious. Yeah, I, I am, absolutely. Yeah, but mm. one of the things I would say, and again, thanks to Sandra, <laughs> is because um, it, you do have to invest, I think, in lighting and a separate camera. But make sure your camera is good. So I have um, a little logic. I mean, I've got a very nice camera already built into my laptop, but I invested not that much, um, I think about £50 on Amazon, for a separate camera to give um, a clearer picture. Because if you are doing more, it's nicer to be able to actually see what people are doing. And I mm. think the quality of some of the inbuilt cameras aren't as good. And yeah. also, you do need some lighting so people can see you. Because if I just have my, at the moment, I've got a little old-fashioned um, <coughs> photographic me. light shining on me. But if, you, if I just relied on my lamp and my overhead light, I'd be like a dark shadow in the corner. So to improve the interaction with the other person, I think you do need to just put a little thought into that. Actually, Sandra, there's, there's quite a good segue, and, and Kerry, you've, you've just led on to something. I've just seen a, a, a comment from Alicia, Alicia A. Douglas. I'm just going to pin that on. Um, so Alicia asks, and I hope I pronounced that correctly, Alicia, what have you found uh, the most challenging aspect of adopting G+. So maybe you've already touched on some of the technical aspects there, Kerry, mm -hmm. but is, is there anything else that, that sort of challenged you as you've come onto the platform? I'm still challenged. I mean, I'm still challenged by so many things on the platform. And one of the things I find really challenging is what do I do as Kerry Wilden and what do I do as the brand Fab After 50? And whoever you ask, they give you a different answer. So I, I'm still challenged by that. I haven't got my head around that at all. Right. I still don't get it. Um, and the other thing I do. Sorry. Well, the other thing is when I spend something, with also understanding when I did public, did I add circles or was I spamming people? I, I think I've been sending things to everybody who'd ever connected to me and realized they're all getting these little things in their, in their little bell in the corner, thinking, who on earth is she? Just because they happened to like something at some point I had done, they were automatically getting all of my um, posts. So I had to sort of stop doing that and then be a bit more selective. But that was an, that was an error on my part. Okay. What, what's your view on that, Sandra? Which part? 
the, sorry, the, I gabbled, the, sorry. No, no, you, you've, you made a lot of sense because mm -hmm. I think a, a, a lot of us um, find our way with circles and, and, and yeah. perhaps run the risk of spamming people. And of course, they're a great tool for segmenting our messages to different different mm -hmm. groups of people, which is excellent. But you, the, the, you also run the risk of posting everything to everybody and that may or may not work. So, yeah. so my question then, Sandra, is, is, is from your point of view, um, is, is that something you felt as well, Sandra, when, when, you, when you came <laughs> on? Oh my gosh, I mean, I think everybody, for, you know, if they say they didn't feel this, I want to meet them, because circles are probably the most confusing things you do. I mean, you sign up the account, and the first thing that Google does is ask you to bring in all your contacts. And then it's like, what, what am I going to do with them? What's the purpose yeah. of all this? Uh, because you don't even know what to do with them. And then you hear people tell you what to do with circles, how to use them for marketing, how to use them to make your core market and everything. And the one thing I found was, where, where are they going? I mean, if people follow me, they see my stream, but if I'm following somebody, they're not seeing anything I do. So it was very blurred in my mind what I was mm -hmm. even doing circles for. And mm -hmm. I think that most people have the, the darndest time with that because how, why am I doing this? Why am I doing posts that the people I'm following aren't going to see things? Because they're people I basically have the interest with because I'm picking them. But if yeah. you're picking me, then I'm not sure that we have a good interest unless you know, I check each of you out. And I have no way of, quote, getting rid of you if you're following me because the only way I can get rid of anybody is if you're in my circle and I can take you out of a circle. So if what I just said isn't confusing enough to anybody new in the audience, then I don't know <laughs> oh, what it is. <laughs> but doesn't that go back, though, to what we're saying? It's not intuitive. It is not. No. <laughs> And, and just for all the best intentions, you can be doing totally the wrong things that annoy people. And I think that's something I find quite difficult. I've probably annoyed so many people on Google+, Plus, and I have found that difficult. I, I think the main reason is Google gives you an option to email when you're um, making, a, when you're adding somebody. You want to add an email notification, and it's like, wow, I can do that? Cool, I'll do it. Mm. But nobody says, oh, wait a minute, that's considered spamming. And that's the first thing that everybody seems to get smacked on the head by, by somebody who's been in Google+, Plus who comes across and say, hey, you should do that. That's called spamming. Well, to begin with, they don't even tell you what you've done. All you yeah. know is all of a sudden you made a post and somebody's accusing you of spamming and you're thinking I'm not going to do this again and so you wait it out again and I wonder how many people do we lose and how many people do we offend without giving them some clear help. I mean, Sean, you look a little puzzled. Uh <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, 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 I've got several strands going through my mind at, at, at once which is, um, I, I mean, on the subject of circles, uh, I, I, I am quite a fan. Um, and that's because I've got several strands to what I do. So some of my strands are around leadership and coaching, some around social media, some around different things. And I, and, and I do find them very, very useful in terms of outgoing messages to segment my, me my, my communications. I don't always do that brilliantly. Sometimes I just default to public so everyone gets everything. But, but what I do try and do is, is, is try and segment. Where I, I, I struggle with circles, and this is, I know this is controversial, and I know people have got different views. In principle, I, I, I like the idea of circle shares, but I, d I don't know what the audience think. I'd be interested to see some comments in the stream. But, but I do think indiscriminate circle shares, for me personally, they, they really screwed up my, my uh, early following. So I, I, was, I was getting some very, very odd... Um, I shall be careful how I phrase it, but but let's just say that some of these bigger, mega, hyper, mega, mega, super, mega, diamond, <laughs> triple mix circles are, are not my cup of tea, to be honest. No no denigration to the people who are in them. No. But I, I find that confuses. And when I first uh, started sharing such circles, it, 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 it didn't really work for me. So I wasn't puzzled. I was just pondering that and pondering how I could make that point. Um, can, do, do, do you mind if I, before I revisit that, there is there is a comment for Kerry that's flipped up into the stream. Okay. That's a bit of a digression, mm -hmm. but it, 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 it's from Dr. Joyce Nudson. I'd just like to put this up because I think it's a, mm -hmm. a really cool one. And then perhaps we can come back to Denise, mm -hmm. who's also posted something. Um, Kerry, um, mm -hmm. Dr. Joyce Nudson makes a point. I love what you've done, Kerry, first yeah. of all, so that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. I'm turning 70 this August and have plans until I'm 100. So mm -hmm. what are your thoughts, 
given that you, you've got fab over 50. What are your thoughts about the over 70s, Kerry? Oh, absolutely. Well, actually, we've got ladies over 70 who've contributed to the website and even profiled ladies in their 80s who've done different things. So it was it's very really after 50, it's after 50, and we keep saying that you, know, you could live to be 100, so the website's supposed to cover that next 50 years. So <laughs> over 70, cool. it's still fabulous after 50. So it, it's well in there. So... And if um, Dr. Joyce Nelson would like to contribute to the website in any way, please get in touch with me because we do encourage people to share their own stories. We've had a lovely lady, I think she, was she 89 or 90? And she just got her black belt in um, wow. the martial arts. You know, and I spoke to her on the phone and she had to spit in her call to me when I interviewed her between walking the dog, doing voluntary work as a lollipop lady and all sorts of other things. And, <laughs> you know, and I felt exhausted just talking to her. And That's you can amazing. see why she's living, why she's so active at her age, is because she doesn't stop. Yeah, uh, that's tremendous. And, and I know that sort of was. Sorry, Sandra, you're popping, you're putting a comment up. Oh, yeah, I took it off. I'll put it back up. Uh, Todd Smith, he brought up, because we were talking about Google Plus being so new and everything to when we first come here, he said new things are generally unfamiliar. <laughs> <laughs> Unfamiliar, sorry, Todd. At first, like when rock and roll first launched, when the Beatles first hit the USA, soul music, disco, rap, and hip hop. This man, I think, likes music. Hallelujah. <laughs> iPhone, <laughs> Facebook, Google Plus. However, hang out for a while, yeah. digest it, and it eventually becomes mainstream. And yeah. I, I think that's really true. And yeah. I go back to the point, though, you've got to be willing to work through the hard part in the beginning. And, you know, some people just. There's other things out there that are more intuitive, and it's like maybe this is just not going to be the one. The other thing, um, um, this one here, and you said her name so well, Sean, and I don't want to mm -hmm. botch it, so why don't you read this? <laughs> well, if, if I did, if I did, Alicia, um, at what point did you see or feel a breakthrough that G Plus is a good platform for you and or your business? Okay, Carrie. <laughs> I think for me it was all about the value of do, being able to do the hangouts on air because yeah. when I first set up Fab After 50 I'd actually wanted to do something which is very much like some this is my, my, my earphones here, very much um, aligned with web conferencing but it was there were so many parameters and it was really expensive. For me to do something we can do today on Google Plus for free I was being, being given quotes anywhere between four and seven thousand pounds for. Well, to share that information by um, a, you know, a web conference, I was going to have to go and get upfront sponsors, and it was an awful lot of work. Now I can get the speakers lined up, we can share the information, and it costs nothing to do. To me, that was the breakthrough. Yeah, wow. Totally I, think, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, and again, I'm going to keep bringing up some of these because they really are good. And in uh, Lions. <laughs> I just saw that. I just, I'm glad you brought that up. So I, I just, I just saw that as well. I thought that was a good one. I know. And you know, we just really always love you. Any place you are, whether you're here or in our hangout or somewhere else, or holding your own, just so that you know. But I love the combination of all the social media platforms for reaching potential audience. Hashtag just saying. Just saying. <laughs> and, um, we, I totally agree because we had this conversation in the green room. But I think there has been when I first came to Google Plus, I felt there's a slight arrogance where people were feeling that okay, well, you, not what you've spent time on Facebook for the last three years. Why haven't you been on Google Plus? I think that all of the platforms have a role to play, and it depends where you want to engage with. And you use the word audience. I tend to use the word more community. I think engagement is like for what I do. It's very much community. And I think you can have different communities across all the platforms. But I don't think anyone is better. I think they're all different. Can can and I can I be stopped by Google Plus for saying that? But there you go. No, I I, I, th I think you're right, and and um, it also depends on your brand. It depends on what mm. you're trying to achieve. Um, and and one of the things that I, I'm quite fascinated with, and I'm I'm thinking a lot about lately, is context. And, and Gary Vaynerchuk talks about context quite a lot. So, uh, and we've also touched on this. You wouldn't post something in exactly the same way on Twitter as you would elsewhere. Now, I know we mentioned that earlier, Kerry, but but you spoke earlier about your strategy. So, some some of your posts are mm. intuitive. You, you just do yeah. them. I just do and them. Some of them. Yeah. Yeah, and some of them are mm. are. are, are 
there is a strategy behind them. So for, for the newer people mm -hmm. watching the show who may be struggling a little bit as to what to post and when and how and how to, uh, how to make it work, and then maybe thinking, God, we've got to post on Google+, and we're also doing stuff on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. What, what advice would you give them? Um, well, I think, first of all, for me, things I post on Facebook automatically go to Twitter. And I add things on separate plus. So I have a, a core number of posts each day. I think, okay, Facebook first, and that's all. So I already have some posts on Twitter as, as a result of that. Um, and I have some things, some of my posts from the website, I have like 1,500 articles. So we do have a way of actually posting those straight to the, the Twitter stream. I don't like to automate everything, but I do think social media has to be social. Um, yeah. When it comes to Google+, Plus, I still haven't really got into a routine of posting in the same way that I have on the other platforms. I'm still finding my own way around that. Um, so I don't have a strategy for Google+, Plus, really, hands up. I don't really have one. <laughs> and other, other than to say I go on there and I try to respond to more things than I actually post. Because to me, it's all about getting oh. to know people and, and engaging. And I've sort of I've connected with people, one or two of the communities. So I go into those communities and I see who else is posting. So I tend to respond and share their things rather than post as many of my own things from new. I post a lot more new things myself on Facebook and Twitter at the moment than I do on Google+. Because I think I'm the new person here and nobody wants me broadcasting. So, so that's I need to build up my engagement before I broadcast, in my mind. But that's how I've approached the others as well. So is this, is, in your head then, is this about quote unquote earning the right to yeah, broadcast? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well, I haven't earned it yet, I'm new. I mean, I'm only sort of you know, three months really of really active participation in Google Plus. Who am I to broadcast? So that's why I tend to try and respond to other people's things at this stage. What, what, what are your thoughts, Sandra? Well, <laughs> well, I would say, to begin with, um, a lot of the things that I've seen you post have nothing to do with something you're selling or um, about, um, you know, a company per se. It's, it's what is of interest to the women over 50. And so mm -hmm. um, by not sharing some of those, I think that maybe it hurts me as a woman by not seeing some of them, by you thinking that you're too new to share with me. I mean, if mm -hmm. I met you in a grocery store and all of a sudden yeah. we started talking, I'd say, well, great, you know, give me some of that information. So when do you, I guess I would say, when are you going to be here long enough to start sharing some <laughs> of that stuff? I, 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 I do share things. No, I probably said not. I mean, I do share things. I do share things. I you know, have the post automatic. I mean, I try to put anything new. I try to put at least one new post a day on the Fab After 50 page. But I tend to, I don't, I need to. I think it's all a question of balance. So maybe it's not 80 20. Maybe it's like 40 60 or 70 30. Because I and I need to engage with other people. Otherwise, what's the point in posting things that you have no engagement on? Because people don't know you to know they want to look at your stuff. Yeah, and that's a good thing. If you feel like you're not getting the engagement that you need, then yeah. I can see why you wouldn't want to do it. And mm -hmm. so um, that's a, an interesting point. You know when. How and what? When does that start happening? I don't know the answer now. I don't think there is yeah. one. <laughs> and some, and some things I do get engagement. I can post something, especially when I engage in some of the communities. I'm going to get a lot of engagement on those posts. But it's certain ones, and it's like I think with all social media, you don't know which are the ones that are going to spark people's interest. Mm -hmm. And I'm surprised you, at of some of the things that I post that I get hundreds of comments on on Facebook sometimes. And I think it's a, it's a throwaway piece I just put together. Normally, because I've been mad at something, to be honest with you. I thought, oh, gosh, I'm not happy with that. That's happened out there. And I'm a bit of a champion of a cause. So I wrote, kind of write this piece up very quickly, post it there. And all of a sudden, I get inundated with comments. So maybe people pick up the energy from my post. I haven't yet I had that sort of post on Google+. Actually, I did have one on Google+. What, what, what was that, that one? By, that was the one that was shared by, actually, David Amelin decided to share it and, and wrote like, quite a lot. And David Amelin, the people on Google+, Plus, is somebody who's been, I think, very active in Google+, Plus since the beginning. And because he shared it, that particular post got an awful lot of engagement. But it was very serious engagement. It was people you know, took it very, they analysed that post, which on <laughs> Facebook and Twitter, people don't normally analyse them, they just comment on them. <laughs> So that was it. that was a bit of a learning curve for me. I didn't get anything else done that day. I was just responding to people's essays on my post, which wasn't meant to be taken quite that seriously. That's so funny. That's but there so you go. Funny. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting you, you speak about cross fertilization though mm. a, a little bit because uh, sorry I'm, I'm, I'm slightly paraphrasing what you said so you're talking about yeah. building engagement Kerry I, I mm. slightly misquoted you uh, but I'm also looking at Carmen uh, Carmen's Carmen Mandish, uh, Mandish, sorry, Carmen, I got the Carmen right, but I may have got your surname wrong, I'm afraid. Um, it is amazing how much is shared and how much you can learn from the different media platforms. Now, the second bit might relate to what you've just said, and what mm -hmm. is really wonderful is how one idea will spark a new idea. So yeah. so do you, do you see ideas on, on one of your streams, maybe it's Facebook sparking an idea mm -hmm. that you can use in Google Plus, Kerry? Um, yes, I think so. Because I mean, sometimes you'll see things where perhaps there's something with, with an image with a, a quote behind it. And there was one post I did which we included a, qu a quote from Sophie Loren. That was really well responded sure. to. I took the short quote on Facebook and I found an expanded version of that quote which I included on Google Plus. Right. And people really liked that and related to it. Had I just put the two liner on Google Plus, I don't think people would have taken any notice no. of it. We go, I did a paragraph and put it in a nice box. People, people commented it, shared it, and and said how what that quote meant to them. Yeah, and again, that's about context, isn't it? So mm -hmm. you use the nub of the the idea, but you tweaked yeah. it and made it true to Google Plus in a, in a way mm -hmm. that was different to to Facebook. Uh, so, yeah. so I really like that. Thank you. And also different to Twitter, because Twitter you haven't got the space. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to change the pace because we do have some new people out there. So <laughs> we're going to bring up Tip Off the Old Block. <laughs> ah, cool. We're, we're going to try and keep this a little bit fun, obviously. Um, you know, so many times it's it's hard to get all of the language right and everything, but uh, all of you are hopefully aware that that little green icon up in the right hand corner of your screen underneath your photo, your avatar, gets you here. So, Carrie, was this ever a problem for you to figure out? <laughs> well, it was, because all of a sudden, I think you sent me a message, Sandra, said, would you like to talk? And I felt my PC was speaking to me, and I didn't quite know where the noise was coming from. <laughs> I was thinking, what do I do now? Obviously, I did, we did connect, but it wasn't obvious. No, and Sean? Yeah, I, I do you know, uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the fondest memories I've got of our early engagement, uh, Sandra, is when you were looking slightly perturbed at the fact that I was randomly pressing every key I could find on my laptop. I, I, I don't know if that's a, that's a guy thing, but I, I went to this blind panic, just like, like you were alluding to, Kerry. I, I, there was this little green icon somewhere, and I knew mm -hmm. that Sandra was asking me to engage with her. Cry Sorry, I won't say what I was about to say, but I, I, I could not... <laughs> For the life of me, find it. So I felt that if I pressed the whole QWERTY keyboard and poured water over the laptop, eventually I'd eventually connect with her. So, yeah. Uh, so it was a problem. In in short, it was a bit of a problem for me. Hopefully, I've mastered it now. I think it's that intuitive thing, and I'm leaving this uh, screen up because I think the Hangout icon in the upper right hand corner, when you click on that, it pulls up all of your Hangout tools, it pulls up the people that you have already done Hangouts with, and not only a Hangout, but this is where you go to do just private talk, you know, like a chat, and this is now on all, all of the phones, there is, you know, the, the little icon for Hangouts from Google, so this is becoming very, very um, prominent and also in your Gmail account. So this is something people really want to become familiar with. And the more you do use something, again, it does it does Absolutely. become easier. But yes. just remember, if you want to get rid of all that stuff on the right, once you click on it, click on it again. Anytime in Google Plus you click on something, something appears to get rid of it, go click on that same thing. Now in Sean's case, I'm going to get rid of this, Sean, but in Sean's case, it doesn't work because he can't remember what he clicked on. <laughs> he clicked um, on everything. <laughs> can I just say one thing, though, which did sure. confuse me when I first started, and you talked about the Hangouts. Some of the things you talk about, I couldn't see, and it's because I was an Internet Explorer. To actually yeah. get the most out of Google+, Plus, I, Very good point. I, you have to you really have it open in Chrome, or a lot of the things that people talk about, you don't get. Yeah, it's I true. It's and I was lost with that for a while because I'm thinking, well, I can't see these things that people are saying are there. It's true. Google Google does not play well with other browsers always. No. And so if you're going to be using Google Plus, you really should be on Chrome as yeah. as the browser. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. <laughs> well, and especially it's on a hangout. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. can, can I roll the clock back a little bit, Kerry? Um, yeah. just to pick up on a couple of comments. 
Um, and, and, and actually, I'm, I'm going to put the second comment up from Denise. We've had one already, I believe. Um, so ignoring the first point, which refers back to a point Sandra was making about circles, um, Denise, in the, in the last sentence, says, I love to expand my contacts, but I really want to attract new customers. So if we ta tackle that, and, and Denise, maybe you can drop us an extra comment, if you would, as to what your business is in the comment tracker. So maybe we can, we can put some specific stuff out there for you. But uh, thinking about expanding your customer base in a different way, or your client base, or your engagement base, Kerry, on Google+. Plus. What sort of things do you think you'll be doing more of on Google Plus, and, and oh, how will that work for you? I don't. I will be doing more Hangouts on Air, definitely. Um, and I guess if it's all, to me, it's all a question of time management and where do sure. I position my time. But probably we will be engaging more in one or two of the communities. And I think Denise, yes. I've connected with Denise in one of the uh, uh, communities. I mean, I'm sure. And I, I believe Denise is in, in the fitness business. Mm. Um, so, but I, I think because I'm not actually selling anything directly, it's slightly different. So it's more with me. It is more about engagement and sharing of information. So it's a slightly different situation. I'm not looking to have anybody come along to teach fitness to. Right, Sean, we're we're not seeing you. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's not a bad thing actually. To be honest, <laughs> so let me see if I can demonstrate my random key presses. Uh, and I'll take that. Thank you for the gentle prompt there, Sandra. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. And Denise, that's a pure example of how we use the tools of Google Plus to our advantage sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and of course, Sandra, that was deliberate. What I was trying to do was show I know. in the audience that, that that's not what you're supposed yeah. to do. So hopefully, hopefully they got that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, Carrie, what what kind of advice could you give to people so that um, I mean obviously you've learned it well, but to help them ensure that they maintain a consistent voice, brand identity across all of the social media platforms? I think that's all about being authentic, really. I think you have to be who you really are. I think you do have to be consistent about things, and if you're known for something, you know, keep those messages. And I'm always saying, you know, be fabulous after fifty. You know, people know that I'm campaigning for certain things. I always want more women over 50 in the media. I always want more women over 50 in advertising. I want employers to take women over 50 seriously. So even with all the humor, humorous stuff we do, and we have some quite serious stuff on the website as well, in my social media things, I hope they get the sense of the fact that we're sort of championing the cause a little bit all the time. So that's how I do it. But you do have to be consistent with your messages. But also, I always say to people, you don't always have to be positive. Because I get quite yeah. upset when people on social media say, well, I haven't been on social media this week because I've been too miserable. Well, who said you always had to be happy on social media? Why can't you have a miserable day? Mm. If that's, well, that's, that's who you are. Don't you think you just blew some people's minds? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. okay, so then, um, <laughs> you know, one of the questions we have was also, what are some of the silly things and fun things that you've done to get your message across? And because of that, I'm bringing up this photo, well. mm. and then I'm yes. going to ask you to explain this photo to right. our audience. <laughs> well, I get asked lots of questions about, you know, what are there alternatives to things like Botox and fillers, and how can we, you know, look our best, look younger? And so I try different. Um, beauty gadgets. So there's some people they don't like to call them beauty gadgets. They're sort of um, beauty items. But anyway, and that one is um, an LED light, which is um, LED light therapy, which is supposed to help promote collagen in your skin and lessen wrinkles. I've actually got it here. So it's a little thing you put. <laughs> it. It's a little oh, wow. thing you press the button, and there's always little red lights. You put it against your face, and that's that. So I kind of said it's almost like Star Trek meets Fab after fifty. <laughs> but I, I love gadgets. I'm dreadful. I absolutely love gadgets. And that's, that's, that's my latest one. It's fantastic. And are, are you at liberty at this point to give us any idea on how it's working? <laughs> or is it or what? Um, well, I haven't, I've only been using it. It's an eight-week thing. I've only been using it for just over a week or so, so I haven't really been using it for long enough to know yet. You can certainly feel it, feel your skin warm, and this stays cold. So it's doing something, I'm just not quite sure what. <laughs> but, but, it, but I kind of wondered if I was out there sort of fighting the aliens or something. But um, no, it's actually a, a skincare device. 
What it's, was it's one cool. of the what was one of the funniest things that's uh, gone on in your um, quest of uh, social media and exchanges uh, and so forth? Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sandra, you're still you're still showing the photo. So oh, it's my, well. turn. <laughs> my turn to get you back. Sorry, sorry, Kerry. I think one of my most retweeted tweets that had nothing to do with Fab After Fifty. I just happened to sit at my desk and the little pot belly pig ran across my lawn. And so I just tweeted, if anybody happens to have lost a pot belly pig at that point I was living in Hertfordshire, tweet me, I know where it is. That particular tweet, I don't know, I mean, it got retweeted and retweeted and retweeted, and it was just a tweet of something that was happening in front of my window. <laughs> and had nothing to do with my brand, nothing to do with Fab After 50, but it just happened. <laughs> well, that's, that, that's, that was a bit bizarre. But, but, but again, you, you spoke, I, I thought it was really interesting what you said about 10 minutes ago, Kerry, about authenticity and being mm -hmm. able to show who you are. So yeah. you, you spoke 10 minutes ago about showing when you, you're not at your best. And being yeah. brave enough to say say that. Also, mm -hmm. tweeting that there's a pot belly pig in your garden is, is showing yeah. you. That, mm -hmm. And I might like to relate to you uh, yeah. as well as your brand. So that so that would actually encourage me to follow you even more. So I think mm -hmm. there's a lesson to be to be learned in in, in that. You you were actually mm -hmm. revealing a bit of you, and I, and and the audience respond and go with that. I think that's a good thing, surely. I thought you that was a one-off. That pig never reappeared. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a single tweet, but um, yeah, but it, it was quite amusing, I think. Um, uh, other things I've done, oh, I don't know. I mean, but through the social media, I have been asked to participate in radio discussions on BBC and various things. So, so I have had some amusing ones, the results of that, where they've got the lineup slightly mixed up. And I found myself, instead of talking about changing perceptions of people over 50, what it was like to be a farmer's wife on national um, radio. And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm not a farmer's wife. And it's almost, I don't know, it must be quite difficult being a farmer's wife. I think, yes, it must be. But would you like to elaborate? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of bizarre, and that, that one got tweeted quite a bit. I didn't know you were a farmer's wife. Actually, well, I'm, I'm not. You know, I go to the farm shops, but I'm not really somebody <laughs> not representative quite a farmer's wife. of living on a farm. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was it was about the hardship that people or not that people might experience, and I really wasn't the person to be answering that question. Uh, okay, but Sean, would you read this one? <laughs> I will indeed. Uh, Andy, Andy Lyons, yeah, hello Andy. Uh, laugh out loud, Sean Mann and Sandra Watson and Kerry Wielden. Re ch -ch -ch changes. I'm a big Bowie fan, so thank you for mm -hmm. doing that, Andy. That's cool. <laughs> uh, I remember last fall when, within 24 hours, G Plus changed how you started the Hangout on air. I ran my own HOA at 12 noon on a Wednesday, then went to host another brand's HOA. The Dot, dot, dot. Now I've only got that. The following picture. evening and could not find how to start the HOA. Oh, mm. hashtag no. change happens. Yeah, and we've just got to go with it, haven't we, Andy? And I think, I think Kerry, you made the same point. Sometimes we've, we've just got to go with it. So, so that's always mm. a good I wonder if, she, if it would have helped if, she, well, she couldn't have even talked about the pot belly pig because she wasn't on air. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But the thing is, they all make changes. I mean, Google Plus makes changes, but Facebook's made some huge changes, and they don't oh. communicate their changes either. I think no, that one all. thing you have to do, I can't just say when you're looking at anything new, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, or whether it's Google Plus, find somebody as a mentor. You know, find the person that, that knows when the changes happen, how they're going to affect the platform, because they normally share that information, so you're not looking to find it on your own. Yes, yeah, very good point. Very good point. So that's Sandra for us. <laughs> it is. Yeah, no, no. You, you, happy to speak to me. Absolutely. No well, well, we've been having a lot of fun with it, haven't we? <laughs> You know, uh, it does make it better. I, I mean, when when you think about it, when you have somebody that you can laugh with and, yeah. and get rid of some of the frustration, because mm -hmm. in the beginning you are so tied up. At least I was. I when I first started, it wasn't the same as it is now. Even people did not readily. Um, at least I sure didn't experience. Let me just say this: I was not embraced by anyone and brought in by somebody's wing. <laughs> mm -hmm. I spent hours and hours and hours, and so that's why I started doing what I do. Because I said, if I experienced, it, other people are going to go through it too, and I don't want them to. That's not a fun yeah. place to be. And I enjoy fun, so I said, there's got to be a fun way to do this to where you can get some of that frustration out. So many times I'll be working with people, and and. I mean, you can. They're they're almost apologetic. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't mean to take so long. Wait a minute. 
you're not even taking long because you're learning it in one day. It took me four months to learn what you're learning right now, so don't be apologetic. <laughs> Well, that, well, well, actually, there's there's an interesting point there, and and again, I think Kerry, you, you alluded to it certainly in the the green room. Most of us here are not in the business of social media. We're no. actually using social media as as a set of tools to help our business become uh, more visible. So there's a double whammy, isn't it? Sometimes when when you're trying to learn the tools, it's not that you really want to learn the tools in in some respects. It's it's there a vehicle to, to drive your business. Is that fair, Kerry? Do, do you think that's Yeah, I think so. And I think I know so a lot of people and they don't know them themselves. They outsource it to somebody else. Now I haven't yeah. done that because I like I like to engage and I just feel if I outsource it, I'm not gonna have that engagement. Sure. But I know other people and there's no way they'd even attempt to run a, a, a Google Plus brand page for themselves. Yeah. They would yeah. just farm it out. So that's yeah. a choice well, that other people make. And, and but your choice has given you different results, I would imagine, and that's where you're getting your yeah. engagement from. That's yeah. what and that's where also I get a lot of ideas of things to include because my website's all about community. If I sure. don't engage in my community, I don't know what it is they want to see on the website. But Do because I'm engaging with people, they actually feed the ideas through to me and say, Can we have this or can we have that? Or I know somebody you should be talking to and so it kind of evolves. Just out of curiosity then, so so Sandra, I know you're probably gonna answer something, but uh, um, in terms of automation, so what's your thought about automation? So some people are dead set against it, some people love it, some people see it as a necessary evil. Where where do you sit? And, and just in case anyone's kind of new to this, I'm thinking of automation in the context of some automated posts as well as genuine engage, uh, engagement. Um, I, well, I do automate some of my Twitter posts, but that's really because when my posts go live, they automatically go to Twitter. And I do have um, a plugin on Twitter which will select a few posts. Like today, for instance, I've been out of the office all day. There's no way I could have been actually sure. showing very much live. Um, yeah. So there have been some which have been automated. And if I'd been a bit better prepared this morning, I might have actually um, scheduled a couple of Facebook posts. As it happens, I didn't. I did them all this morning before I went live. But I. Right. But, in normal circumstances, I perhaps would have scheduled something. So I'm sure. all for scheduling, but you can't just uh, you can't just do that because you have to respond to people. Because you want the engagement, you have to respond to them. So if people take the time to actually put a comment on my post or retweet something or comment on it, I like mm. to go back in and actually respond to those people because that's what you would do in real life. So that's sort of what you have to do Absolutely. online as well. So those things I don't, and I don't know if you can automate on Google, I haven't tried that yet. Um, people were saying there's a tool to automate for brand pages, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I certainly mm -hmm. haven't done. I think you can use Hootsuite and, and, uh, with, with Google+. Plus. I don't know if anybody's got some experience with that in the stream, but so, uh, I haven't used it with Google+, Plus, but you can do. That's my mm -hmm. belief. So, Sandra, have you yeah. got any, have you, have you used anything on Google+, Plus, Sandra? Oh, I don't do anything automated. <laughs> I, I I may someday down the future, who knows? <clears throat> I'm a big one that um, I really try to make it relevant to the time, and that's just me. I mean, <laughs> you know, what can I say? I also don't use Facebook and I don't use Twitter. I've used both of them in the past. I personally made the decision to walk away from them. I may turn around and go back to them at some point in the future, but um, I mean, Carrie, you've had such a, a, a great success with the type of thing that you were doing. It's totally understandable why you're there and why you stay there. I would be doing the same darn thing. Uh, it doesn't make sense not to. And to look at Google Plus as being the end all and the beginning and, you know, like turn it into religion is really silly. No, I think I it has I don't think you can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of a number of avenues, and there are things that I don't do. I mean, the next one I need to look at. Well, I just sort of dabble, and I didn't get very far with Instagram. Other people mm. for other businesses, Instagram is is actually delivering more results for them in terms of engagement and getting the message across than either Twitter or Google Plus. So I, find, I was talking to somebody, and she does bridal makeup. She gets business mm. from her Instagram posts, which she wouldn't get from Absolutely. Google Plus. So I think it depends what your business is and what's right for your business model. Totally. 
I, t I totally think you have to go back to what is your business, mm -hmm. how, where is the audience that your your community, as you call them, Carrie, yeah. where where will they be for the most part, and then you have to spend your time. There's over 300 and some social media platforms. Okay, there's mm -hmm. only a few that are very important, but how many of us can really do that? And if you're talking about a solopreneur or small business or an entrepreneur, um, they don't have the time. And they don't have the resources, money-wise, generally, to go out and, and, and get somebody to do all that. So you pick what your battle is, if you will. And I think that's true in business, period. I think there's some good prin principles for business that you have to constantly stay true to when it comes to social media and not let yeah. social media be the, the key of how you run a business because it's just yeah. part of it. And also, if your business is, it depends what your business is. If you have a local business, I mean, I did a project with some people who were looking, um, over 50 looking for work, and I did this actually with the Times newspaper, and there was one person as part of our project, and she said, well, I do all, my, and she was a self-employed, I think, like yoga instructor or something, and her sole marketing activity was Twitter. She said, but I've got a thousand followers. I said, oh, good. I said, so where are your thousand followers? You know, are they all local to you? I've got them in Australia. I've got them here. I've got them there. But none of those people were going to walk into her yoga studio. Absolutely. So, so you have to look at if you're going to be if you have a local business, how do you connect with the local community? Is there a local community of what you do on Google Plus? Is there a local community? Can you connect with other local businesses who are complementary to yours on Twitter? And what, you, and what you just said, Carrie, uh, totally. I have never heard anybody talk about starting a local community. Mm. for businesses on Google Plus would be an extremely wonderful way to send yeah. people, you know, your target audience, um, for sure. I I mean, what do you think, I, 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 You know, it's funny, a, a friend of mine, uh, my, my background is pharmaceuticals, um, and a friend of mine who wanted to leave the industry, who had trained as a Reiki practitioner, and she was doing a lot of alternative mm -hmm. health care, did exactly what Kerry alluded to. So this lady was based in, it doesn't really matter where she was based in, let's, she was based in a part of Wales uh, in, in, in the UK, but regardless, she could have been in Florida, she could have been anywhere. And, and she was quite proud of her Twitter following. And I said, okay, let's go through your Twitter following. There were people from the States, that's fine, but she was doing a local business. This was the whole yeah. point. There, there, there were people from Africa, and I was saying, okay, so you've got, 1500 people here but probably you've got 150 people actually yeah. that are really valuable to you as a local business and taking the one to two percent ratio of followers versus people who will actually engage and do business with you that means you've got about 10 that mm -hmm. might do something with you so so yeah your point about building local communities Kerry I absolutely couldn't agree with you more I think that's spot on really mm -hmm. really yeah you know, there's a UK community on Google Plus I think the hashtag the Brit Pack. So that's at least the country. No, but we haven't got anything that's regional. I don't think for people in local businesses yet. Not that I'm aware of. But that's maybe right. another aspect. That's interesting. You know, I was talking to somebody not too long ago about this very subject because we we forget that anything we're doing, especially if we're here because of business, it needs to be with the end the end result, the end mind thought being, am I reaching my market? Am I, or am I just throwing spaghetti to the wall? And and I brought up the subject. I'd love to see how somebody is going to use the platform for a, you'll have to laugh with me on this one, for a funeral home and mm -hmm. be reaching worldwide. I mean, how is that going to help them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this person now is trying to figure out a way to do an HOA, I know, <laughs> so that uh, they can have their local funeral home uh, doing it. But, you know, you have to think about this. What are we going after? And mm. I just think that's really important. Yeah, and I suppose it depends. It comes back to product and brand, doesn't it? Because if I'm selling information products, then my market can be global. It can, and, and it doesn't. Right. It doesn't matter where my followers are because that that doesn't require uh, a physical distribution. If I'm doing uh, a healthcare practitioner local massage business, mm -hmm. it can only be delivered by me. And therefore, it's foolish, isn't it, to have followers all around the world? Yeah. So, so I think it's very much again. It comes back to this point: what is your business? What does it stand for? Who are your customers? Where are your customers based? Where do they hang out? And if it's appropriate to to have followers everywhere, then absolutely, we, you know, that that works for me. But if I was doing something which required my physical presence, 
in a geography, I might not do it that way. So it's quite an important point. Yeah. I mean, my husband's discipline, so he, he requires a you know, geographic location. So there's yeah. no point in him having lots of followers in, in, in the States. You know, it might be nice to engage peer-to-peer -peer information, but his customers won't come there because they have to physically walk through the door. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, well, <laughs> sorry. go on. No, no, no. I was, I was going to go off on one, one, one of the usual Sean things. I was just thinking. <laughs> so I, I will park that for another time. I'll just, I'll just throw it out there. Well, I think it's been a lot of ex exceptionally good conversation, for, especially for people that uh, are trying to figure out what to do with Google Plus. Some that already do know how to use the tools, how to post, how to uh, engage, and on and on. What do you do after that? You know, what do you do with it? And I think, Sean, you, you simplified it very well by saying, you know, know your business. Mm. Yeah. What is it that you are trying to achieve? What, what is the end result? And what you are doing, is it towards that goal? And we forget that, I mean, so often. Uh, whether it's a, a local business or we're, we're marketing on the Internet or using social media. Yeah, and, and, and deliver on your promises. And Kerry said it very well for me, you know, when, when we were talking about automation. Kerry made the point that she, she'll automate to the point where she can share some information when she's otherwise not around, but she'll engage and she'll engage for real. And, and for me as a client of any business, um, if I'm taking the trouble to communicate with someone on a social media platform, I, I really relish a response from a human being. I don't want to see something that's automated. I don't want to see something that's not got a personality. And I want to see that person's story and that brand's story. So if if a business delivers all of that to me, whatever the business may be, then I'm a satisfied client and you've probably got me for life. If I'm not engaged with, then I'm sorry, I'm just going to go. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just not interested. I think that well says it. <laughs> well, okay, Carrie, we're going to ask you to give us um, your last um, parting thoughts to the people that are still in the audience and then those for the future. You know, I always say, and Sean, you've heard me say this all the time, it's not just for our live audience. No. Where, where does this video reside in the end? Where's its final resting place? And it's YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just found my... <laughs> and you know, from the ones that we've done previously, Sandra, where we've had our little practice sessions with um, on, on, on the Fab After 50 guest channel, we've had hundreds and hundreds of people have watched those videos, although we haven't had a very big live audience. But the momentum has gained and people are saying, can you let us know when the next one's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So people are engaging. But for various reasons, A, they may not be on the... Your customers may not be on Google+. Plus. If you're doing a hangout, they're not going to be on Google Plus to engage with you, but they may engage with your YouTube channel Absolutely. Or, or, or an embedded YouTube video. You, could, you don't have to put the whole of the hangout there. You could just take a segment of it and put it in a post to explain a point and oh, share yeah. that with your yeah, audience. I mean, we love the, the uh, engagement when we have it live and everything. It's mm -hmm. great. But for those that have not been able to come here live, we want them to still feel the engagement factor and feel that they are just as important to us <coughs> as those that have come. All, all, anybody that yeah. in, interacts with us through an HOA is very important to us. Mm. Absolutely. And I think yeah. it, it really is important that we remember that, that, okay, just because this ends, it really doesn't end. We are still out there talking to people and hoping that we have given them something to work with and to help them in their journey, in, journey, in their business, in their Google Plus experience, and in life in general. Absolutely. And I think, for me, that's a biggie. Mm -hmm. And I know for the two of you, because I know you both pretty well, mm -hmm. um, even though we don't live close by. <laughs> can, I add, can I add one thing, which sure. is that, I mean, as much as my first platform really was Twitter, and I got help there. I found Facebook intuitive following on from Twitter. I didn't find Google Plus intuitive. If, you, if you're really stuck, work with somebody to get you there. That's what I would say. Don't, don't, sort, of, don't sort of panic and, and just give up, but find somebody that will help you. Exactly. I tend to endorse that. No, I, I think that's a brilliant, brilliant point. And uh, for me, the sticking point was Hangouts. Uh, I, I knew I wanted mm -hmm. to use Hangouts. I, I was confused by the menus and the, the process of um, 
uh, things like the comment tracker and, and, and some might say I still am, Sandra, but uh, I'm, I'm getting there. But in, in all seriousness, Kerry makes a great point. You, you know, as with anything in life, get a mentor um, because there's so many good things happening out there, whether it be social media or whatever, and, and it'd be so silly and sad to, to neglect those opportunities just because of a few hurdles. And that's tr as true of Google Plus as it is of anything. So well said. Definitely agree with you. Cool. Okay, we are at our stopping point. We went a few minutes over, but that's okay. <laughs> right now, guess what we're going to do, uh, Mr. Sean? <laughs> oh, no, here we go. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. I am, I am ready. Okay, thank you for coming, and here is our parting theme to you. <laughs> Google Plus for you and me. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Sean. And see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.